Well, good morning. Welcome aboard November 147, Bravo Romeo. Uh, Paul Dye made a really interesting observation the other day on Vans Air Force, and he pointed out that there actually is no requirement to have an airspeed indicator in an airplane. So I thought what I'd do today is fly without any airspeed indications, and I'd show you an alternative method uh, for having some uh, real good energy essay about what's going on with your airplane. So we've covered up uh, the primary PFD and also our uh, standby airspeed indicator. We don't have any other airspeed indications in here. I've got the auxiliary display set up today just showing angle of attack. And uh, the angle of attack performance indications I have on there are LRD max, on speed, as well as a percent lift indicator. So really everything I need to uh, fly the airplane. Uh, the tone is up, and we're going to take off, and we're going to go fly a sortie without using an airspeed indicator. Welcome to traffic RV 7 Bravo Romeo, departing runway 36, Ruckle. So as the airplane accelerates, tone comes alive. On speed condition actually corresponds to a VX condition. So now I'm climbing best angle of climb. And now once I've cleared the trees, I'm gonna go ahead and just accelerate out to an L over D max condition. That's 50% lift and easy enough to capture just using the AOA system. So now I'll just establish an L over D max condition. And that's going to approximate best rate of climb. Now, the engineers are going to go, well, VAC, that's really a power-dependent condition. And you're absolutely correct. And power has to factor into speed. But it turns out that an L over D max condition is really close enough for most light aircraft. So there's an L over D max condition. I'll just go ahead and maintain that for my climb. This will approximate best rate of climb. Easy enough to do that using the visual indicator or the tone. The tone comes on at L over D max. And we'll just climb up to 5,500 feet. Now, what we've done is use just a standard military Chevron donut display and added a uh, departure, trend indicator to it, along with a set of uh, LRD Max cues that makes it real easy to find in LRD Max condition. So you can see that at LRD Max, I'm just in and out of the start of the fast tone. All right, let's take a quick look at uh, how we fly AOA cues on takeoff. Now, we showed you during a real takeoff, but let's take a little more time up here at altitude to explore those cues. So we talked about LRD max approximating uh, best rate of climb, and that's certainly sufficient for initial climb segment in uh, just about any airplane. And one thing to keep in mind about LRD max as we pull the nose up, go to wide open condition, establish that, is L over D max is designed into the airplane. Okay, It's the fundamental angle of attack for any airplane. The designer knows exactly what that angle is. And from L over D max, we can drive other key performance angles of attack, including on speed and Carson speed. Now I'm in an L over D max condition now, 50% climb. I'm sorry, 50% lift with the trend indicators aligned with the LRD Max Q. The bottom Chevron lit. The airplane's now in a very stable condition, and I'm approximating best rate of climb. Now, if I wanted to transition to best angle of climb, all I have to do is increase my angle of attack. See the pitch increasing outside. Establish an on-speed condition. The green donut lit, 60% lift, and a solid tone. There we are, on speed. Now we let things stabilize, about 20 degrees nose up or so, just a guesstimate. Now we're at a best angle of climb condition. Now what does a negative energy state sound like even at full power? Well, sounds like this. We just continue to pull the nose up. Let me just put my feet on the horizon, and we're going to do power on stall. Nose is up about 30, 40, 45 degrees, and there's a power on stall. So we can recover from that power on stall by reducing AOA immediately to either an on-speed condition, or in this case, let's go to an elevated max condition. 
It's real important to understand that uh, in order to actually fly using a performance-based AOAQ, number one, the system has to be very accurately calibrated. The system that I'm flying today is accurate to within a quarter of a degree at high G and a tenth of a degree at low G. The other thing that system has to be able to do is damp what is otherwise a very noisy signal. Now, some folks on the forums, like Ed, have pointed out that, in fact, AOA is a very noisy signal. It's hard to fly a noisy signal because it's dancing all over the place. But what we do is we process that signal, and we damp it, we filter it out so that the signal becomes very usable. And we can actually use a pilot control mode to adjust the gain of the signal as well. So it's a little bit of a balance to get everything dialed in uh, between the uh, airway bands that we're capturing, how accurate the system is, how well it's damped. But what we need to do is we need to be able to be responsive enough to work in turbulent conditions or under high G, yet we still have to have a nice, usable, flyable signal. So we'll take a look at all of those things today when we get out to the area and when we get back to the traffic pattern. So we basically conducted the entire takeoff phase of flight just using angle of attack. Now we're up at cruise altitude, if this was a normal sortie. Okay, I'm going to just set my normal cruise power, so I'm at about a 60% condition right now. And really all I care about now is, uh, you know, my fuel flow and my uh, basic navigation math. And of course that is dependent upon ground speed, and that's all going to be derived from my uh, GPS. So as far as my navigation math goes, obviously we don't do that with angle of attack. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this airplane is fully instrumented, so we post all of our data online. We're an open source organization, and we're happy to share data with anybody that's interested in looking at it. So let's take a look at just how a performance-based angle of attack system works. Now, this system actually just has a tone that comes on at L over D max, corresponds with the visual signal for L over D max, and we call that the fast tone. And you're going to hear a low frequency tone with increasing beeps as the airplane slows down until we get to an on speed condition and the tone is going to go steady. Now, functionally, there's really never a requirement to pull any harder than an on speed condition because if you do, your specific energy is actually going to be negative. In other words, you're going to have more drag than thrust. And typically, we don't want to be in that situation because that means the airplane is going to continue to slow down or go down unless you reduce angle of attack or increase power, assuming you can do that. So let's take a look at just how the basic tone system works. We'll just go ahead and start to decelerate here. And high-speed cruise, I'm only using 10% of the lift capacity of the wing. As we decelerate, our percent lift is going to increase, and our angle of attack is going to increase. That makes perfect sense. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just stop and we'll explore an L over D max condition. Now L over D max is best range speed. Uh, we already talked about on the takeoff how it roughly correlates with uh, best rate of climb. And it's also maximum range glide. So if we lose the engine, it's a handy cue to have in the airplane. It's a handy cue if we're going to go into holding and we need to extend our range. Anyway, as the airplane decelerates, we get to an LRD max condition at a 50% lift condition. And that's where the tone starts. So if I don't have the visual indicator, and the visual indicator isn't required, okay, I can just listen to where that tone starts, and I can change my pitch just slightly to be in and out of that tone. To know exactly where LRD max is. And also, the pulse rate helps tell me if I'm continuing to slow down. Now, if I combine the tone with the visual indicator, then it's real simple to maintain an exact 50% lift condition once I get the airplane trimmed up. So let's do that for just a second. So now the airplane's in an LRD max condition, which means at this particular power setting, which is 18 inches by 1800 RPM, I'm in a maximum range, maximum endurance condition. So now let's slow the airplane down to an on-speed condition. And by the way, the way the military uh, chevron system works is that the chevron that's lit up tells you which way to pull the nose to get to an on-speed condition. I'm not really worried about my altitude today. I'm more worried about my angle of attack. So I'm just kind of expediting things. And the green donut lights up. Tone goes solid. And now we're in an on-speed condition. 
Now that speed occurs at 60% lift. So our percent lift indicator shows 60 up on the top. Green donut's lit, and the trend indicator's right in the middle of the donut. Now, what's neat about on speed, okay, is it is VAP, so it is the speed that you want to fly for your approach and landing. There's no need to add any gust additive or anything else to it. It's just a fixed AOA. It's also maximum endurance glide, so if you want maximum hang time while you're up here, you just establish an on-speed condition. The other really neat thing is from an energy management perspective, it's a zero piece of S condition. So right now, I know my thrust and my drag are perfectly balanced. If I actually pull a little bit harder, what does that mean? Well, that means my piece of S is going to go negative, so let's do that, okay? Decelerate a little bit, and what does that mean? That means the airplane's either going to go down or it's going to slow down unless I do something. Now, what are those somethings? Well, one something is to reduce my pitch. If I reduce my pitch and decrease my AOA, I'm back to a zero piece of S condition. Now, let's go back up and do that one more time. So I'm slowing down, I'm getting into a negative energy state. And here's my negative energy state. Now what else could I do? Well, I could push something else, my throttle. I've got throttle available, so I can correct things with power, assuming that I have power available to do it. And notice how now we're in a fast tone. That means we've got positive P sub S. All right, let's turn the airplane around to a heading of uh, northeast so we get the sun out of our eyes here. Just maintain an L over D max condition in the turn. Roll out on a hang of about uh, zero four five ish Okay, and let's get slowed down now. And now let's explore the slow tone. Okay, so we'll get back to an on-speed condition here. Just reduce the power, increase the pitch a little bit, trim. Let's talk about what it means to operate in the slow tone, and let's talk about stall warning just a little bit. Now, one neat thing about any angle of attack system is if it's properly calibrated, it is absolutely the best progressive stall warning that you can have. So no matter how, what side you come down on on the AOA airspeed debate, Okay, you just can't beat a system like this for progressive stall warning. So now we're in an on-speed condition, 60% lift. Now, I actually have an on-speed band. I have my on-speed band set to plus or minus one-half degree actual angle of attack and plus or minus 2.5% uh, lift. And the reason I do that is because if I go for a absolute precise angle in the middle of the band, it gets to be a little bit of an unusable signal and I'm not that good a pilot and for what we're doing flying light planes or even flying fighters this band has proven to be very effective uh, and by the way all this technology is not new we've been flying this in fighters for over a half a century and we've been using it as our primary reference for approach and landing now let's explore the slow tone just a little bit so you can hear that there's an increase in pitch and as the airplane decelerates we get that faster pulse rate until we actually get to stall warning and then you can hear a really fast pulse rate and we flash the yellow chevron okay and real possible to hang out here right in the stall warning now rvs don't give good buffer cues but i know i'm real close to the stall right now matter of fact if i just keep pulling the nose up let's let the airplane stall because we know we're in negative energy state so therefore i'm going to continue to go down or slow down and there we go an airplane stalls and by just listening to the angle of attack, did you hear that quick secondary stall? But very easy to reestablish an on-speed condition. I'm not even touching the throttle. I'm just flying the airplane using AOA. Okay. So now the other thing that we want to consider about AOA, and of course we don't have an airspeed indicator, but AOA doesn't care about our airspeed at all. Okay. So let's just maneuver the airplane a little bit. I'm just going to accelerate on out here. And I don't really know exactly how fast I'm going. I'm at 5,000 feet, so I'm going to get some smash on, which is fighter pilot, for I'm going to go fast. And I'm actually going to get a warning ding when I hit uh, VNO, which is maximum structural cruising speed. So I know I'm below maximum structural cruising speed. I don't know exactly what my airspeed is right now. I'm going to let the airplane accelerate. I'm going to select wide open throttle, otherwise known as mill power. 
And I don't have a G indicator because that's all covered up right now. So let's just fly the airplane up over the top and use on speed to fly the back side of a loop. Now I'm just approximating my G pull. And capture an on speed. I'm going to fly in on speed condition. My airspeed is going to be varying greatly. All right. But nevertheless, it's going to give me about a zero piece of S condition, which means maximum sustained turn performance. That's kind of a handy number to have when I turn. So let's just maneuver the airplane a little bit arbitrarily and see what the AOA sounds like when we do that. So let's start with just a 4G yeah. brake turn and establish an yeah. on speed condition. So now I'm on speed. I'm at about three and a half, four Gs. Okay, but by being on speed, I'm in a maximum sustained turn condition. Yeah. Super handy in a dogfight. <laughs> yeah. And I know most folks aren't dogfighting, but also handy yeah. if we have an engine out situation and we want to glide the airplane. So now let's just simulate a takeoff at low power with a stall and a gliding turn. Let's say we wanted to maneuver the airplane a little bit after a simulated engine failure on takeoff. Well, the easiest way to do that is to use an on-speed cue. So I'm in an LRD max condition. My nose is up, I don't know, 15, 20 degrees. Can't tell for certain, don't have a PFD. I'm gonna pull the power back. We'll let the airplane stall because we go, oh my God, engine failed, not paying attention. There's a stall. Well, we know about 45 degrees of bank is gonna be optimum for a turn back maneuver. So all I need to do now is establish an on-speed condition. Okay, and that gets me to that maximum sustained turn rate. So it's a really good trade-off between glide performance and turn performance if I have to maneuver the airplane. Now the power's back in idle, so let's just continue to maneuver on speed. Notice, doesn't really matter what my bank angle is. Power's all the way back in idle. Let's get some smash. Kind of downline here. Don't really know what my airspeed is. Ah, now I know what it is. It's 180 indicated. Now let's just barrel roll the airplane. Again, power's back in idle. But all I want to do in here is just capture an on speed condition. And I know exactly what my energy state is when I come out of this. So there's my on speed condition. Really that simple. Again, let's go back and just that 45 degree gliding turn. So there's our 45 degree gliding turn, and all I'm doing is splitting the horizon to approximate 45, and I'm listening to my angle of attack, and I've got a visual angle of attack indication. But this is an optimum turn condition. Now one important consideration for any angle of attack system is we have to properly process that really noisy native signal. We have to damp it down, and then we still have to maintain the responsiveness. In other words, it has to be able to deal with either a rapid pilot control input or a gust load. G limit. G limit. Got an example of a wind shear encounter that shows you just exactly how well the system performs in a very demanding situation. You watch the airspin indicator. You can see that in the roundout flare itself, I lose 15 miles an hour of indicated airspeed just about instantly. I'm good. More Victor Roger. Let's head back now and see how we can fly our performance-based AOA cues in a normal traffic pattern. Now. Local traffic, RV, 7 Bravo, man's on the go, right close traffic, 36 run. Roll 
Blood on downwind. Clear our landing checks. Gas, undercarriage, mixture, propellers, pumps, pressure and throat. And decelerate to an elevated max. VFE condition. There we go. Flaps 20 selected. Trim, trim, trim. And continue decelerating to on speed. On speed. Looking over my shoulder. Off the perch. Welcome traffic RV, Sem Bravo Romeo's right base gear down option, 3-6 Ruckel. if required to control my glide slope. I'll actually use a little bit of slip coming over the trees here. We've got some high trees at the end of our runway. Not ideal coming in from this direction today. But is what it is. A little bit of a slip up over the top. And reestablish our on-speed condition for touchdown. LVD max condition, simulated climb out. All right, 250 feet AGL. Power's coming back, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. All right, simulated turn back maneuver. Establishing an on speed condition. On speed, deploy lift flaps. Lift flaps are deployed, slightly slow condition. Be real questionable. On speed. Trees, trees, trees. Trees, 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 trees. All right, here we go. Dumping the nose. Getting our slip in there. Looking real good. Selecting flaps 40. And transitioning to an on speed condition for our full stop. And that's a 4,000 foot runway. So you can see that we turn back over about the middle of the runway. And of course you got a face full of trees in that turn. And that was all done just using angle of attack, no airspeed indications.